Auburn's wide receivers are making it harder to cover in-person practices. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day or second listen. It's a happy hour edition of the show. We welcome in Brad Law, co-host of Village Vice. You can check out me and Brad several times a week on the War Dam Pods YouTube channel. Of course, Brad also with the Auburn um the Auburn Sports Radio Network. Brad, I want to talk about recruiting in a second, but in these viewing windows that we get for practice, and we had one earlier today, I feel like I'm doing a worse job of watching the entire team because I can't stop watching these wide receivers, Brad. It just yeah. it just looks different, and it looks so like much better than it always has, and I can't quit staring at these guys going up and getting the football. Yeah, um, and, and I think you're not alone in that department. They This coaching staff went out and completely revamped the receiving core, not just in the recruiting class, but in the portal. And to hear guys like Sam Jackson talk to the media uh, after practice today and say that with veterans, the experience yeah. of a, uh, you know, Andre Lambert Smith and Robert Lewis and the experience of Peyton Thorne helping him to transition back to the receiver spot to call out specifically Lambert Smith and Lewis as the guys because of their intelligence, their experience um, that should make people really like, even if you can be more excited about the receiving core yeah. um, that, you know, that'll get you there. And just from like a watching practice point of view, because there really wasn't a whole lot of notes. I mean, yeah. the, the only thing that we know is I spent a little bit of time with the defensive line. It looked the same as it did last week. Guys are in the same spot. But with the receivers, Marcus Davis, Auburn's wide receiver coach, is a rising star. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he was hired, it was like, okay, cool. We've got an Auburn guy coming back. That's exciting. But can he recruit? And then he goes and helps Coach Freeze assemble the greatest receiver recruiting class in Auburn's history. And it was probably the best in the country. Uh, I'd have a hard time finding one better. Yeah. But he's more than that. I mean, this is a guy who's so passionate in the way that he's coaching these guys. It's hard not to watch him either. And the way they're coaching KLS, Keandre Lambert Smith, the transfer from Penn State that you just mentioned. I mean, they're coaching him after every rep, Brad. Yeah. And like there's the urgency to say, hey, you're important. Hey, we need you day one this season. Yeah. That's got to be a cool message to KLS as, I mean, he made a tough decision to come here. Remember, Marcus knows about that too. He experienced that at Auburn. Say what you want about, about Gus's tenure here, but we had some terrific wide receivers. I mean, we recruited some talented guys. There's some guys who unfortunately didn't finish their career at Auburn, but I mean, you had big, fast, athletic, huge sure. catch radius type guys. Then you had Marcus Davis who didn't blow anybody away physically. He, you know, he didn't have Anthony Schwartz speed. He didn't have Seth Williams, you know, oven mitt hands, but he sure did get on the field as a freshman, didn't he? in that yeah. magical 2013 season, have some huge catches. Might have saved the Texas A&M game with a fourth down catch staring into the sun. Good this point. guy knows what it takes to get on the field immediately your freshman year and compete in the SEC and to be a part of a high-octane offense. So, yeah, he's got the recruiting chops, but he's got the coaching chops too. Yeah, and the way that these receivers, both the older guys like Robert Lewis and KLS, as well as these young guys, just the way they look at him and respect and like hang on every word that he says as a teacher. It's cool. You can't teach that. You got to earn that, Brad. You got to yeah. earn that. So I think that's cool. The biggest note, the biggest change, or at least thing I noticed was Caleb Burton lined up more outside than at the slot in the viewing window that we had earlier today, which we've seen him kind of scoot more to the outside at chunks of the season last year. I think that was more so in the bowl game. And we didn't know if like that's how they viewed him or if that was just because Auburn ran out of receivers in the bowl game. I don't know, but it does seem like they view him more as an outside wide receiver moving forward, just based off of the limited reps we've been able to see. Your thoughts on Caleb Burton as an outside guy? 
Yeah, it's a good it's a good question. I wonder, does it mean they feel really set about the slot? Like they feel excellent about that. And then, you know, if you have more than you have multiple outside yeah. receivers, then that's where you that's where you put the other guys to jockey for for playing time. Um yeah. Caleb sort of has gotten lost in the shuffle, quite frankly, hasn't received as much attention, media, fans, wh whatever discussion is out there because of your newcomers, your portal guys and, and your freshmen. Um, but he's a guy who factored pretty heavily more in the second half of the season last year than in the first half. So he's yeah. got speed. That's for sure. Maybe he's a guy you can line up and, you know, just let her fly. Yeah, there's a guy that DMs me every day on Instagram saying like, hey, I think Caleb Burton's not being talked about. I'm like. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But in that part of like what's been so impressive about what they've done with the roster. Yeah. I mean, Caleb Burton and Camden Brown. Yeah. After departures a year ago, were probably like your top two options coming back. And now they're what? Fifth? Yeah. Sixth? Yeah. Probably so. Depends on if you count Rivaldo in with the receivers. Because you have to. You do, it I think you have to. One. Yeah, I think you have to. But yeah. it's like Rivaldo, KLS, Cam, Perry, um, Robert Lewis. I mean, it's just, it's been interesting to see how um, how reloaded this room is. And it's nothing against Caleb Burton. I think we forget how young Caleb Burton is. We That's just right. assume he was a transfer and it's like, oh, he's an older receiver and he's really not. He's really not an older receiver. And he still has so much time to learn. And so he's, I think I think he's got a lot of similarities to KLS. Yeah. And so like if I'm this coaching staff and you you slot him behind Keandre Lambert Smith, it's just like watch him when he's gone, do what he's doing. Fill the gap yeah. for when he leaves. That that's what his miss that what his mission needs to be. Yeah. And kind of and you know, do you work him in in situations where you're just running an opposing defensive back ragged? on the field with KLS and now you bring Caleb in and you just, man, you just can't keep up with those two for a, for a full game. Caleb Burton um, had 16 catches, 226 yards. If you take Fairweather out of the mix, he's the leading returning receiver because the others were Javarius Johnson and Jay Fair. So yeah, sure. 20, 25 yards a game, 19 total catches. Uh, I'm sorry, 16 total catches for the year leading returning receiver and now we're talking about fourth fifth sixth somewhere in that department for 24. yeah bryce kane wearing number six it almost makes you forget that like javaris johnson is gone because yeah. it's like he'll do that quick cut you know where it'll be an in breaking then he'll like cut up field and like javaris was so good at that yeah and it's like wow but you know javaris was an upperclassman and Bryce Keen hasn't played a rep of college football yet. It's like, that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. <laughs> I mean, I think he's got to wait his turn. You know, I think Robert yeah. Lewis is going to hold down that position. It'll be interesting to see what that dynamic looks like next year when Sam Jackson and Bryce Kane are kind of probably battling for reps in the slot, which is a great situation where you want to be in. But it's like, man, just the future of the room, it, it looks even brighter than than the current state of the room. And, and speaking of bright, you light up as does any knowledgeable Auburn fan when you talk about these receivers. I made this point on Village Vice earlier this week. If you're a defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. give me a personnel grouping, for a realistic personnel grouping for Auburn. Give me the first team skill positions on the field for Auburn. All right, so your outside guys are Cam Coleman and KLS. You'll have a tight end that's Rivaldo. Uh, your slot is probably going to be Robert Lewis, and then your running back will be Jarquez Hunter. All right, what do you do? Your defensive coordinator, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, you probably uh, you probably play off ball on the outside, okay. and you have to walk a nickel up to to gov uh, to cover Rivaldo or a safety, and maybe you have your nickel on um on whoever's at slot. In this case, Robert Lewis, and then you know you hope your linebackers make a play if Jarquez gets the ball. I mean, that's just a lot of stress. It's a lot of one on one matchups. Yeah. It, it puts guys in one-on-one -on -one matchups that you feel more comfortable about winning one-on-one -on -one matchups than you have in a very long time. I love Jarquez probably eight, nine times out of ten, one-on-one -on -one in space against the average linebacker, yeah. um, SEC or, or out of conference. I love KLS winning a one-on-one -on -one matchup if he's not bracketed or doubled. Um, same, same with Robert Lewis. Their fundamentals are just so strong yeah. at this point in their careers, their body positioning, first step, and and all of that. And well, not to mention their hands, which are fairly important. Yeah. And you mentioned Robert, um, 
or I guess Sam Jackson's answer to when he was made available to media earlier today. But Jarquez Hunter, I think, did a sit down with uh, with Andy Burcham, voice of the Auburn Tigers, and Andy yeah. asked about the offensive line on some social clip that Auburn football posted. And he's like, "Yeah, they're doing a good job." You know, he kind of lit up a little bit and like Jarquez when he talk, he plays with a lot of emotion. He does yeah. not talk with a lot no. of emotion. That's no. just, that's just who he is. He's he's uh, he's a man of few words with the media, which is fine. But he was excited to talk about this offensive line, where he's like, you know, they're making holes. They're you know they're 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 working hard up front. I just saw him more animated talking about the guys blocking for him than yeah. literally any other question he's ever been asked ever. <laughs> is is Jarquez the most excited offensive player on this year's team because of what the new receivers might mean for him? Think of the number of games that teams just rolled everybody down into the box and just yeah. said, hey, we don't think you have the receivers to beat us in one-on-one -on -one matchups. So we're going to make life tough. And Auburn still was the like 24th best running team in the country a year yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm getting flashbacks to the Cal game that kicked off at midnight uh, where they just kind of loaded the line and we couldn't do anything yeah. about it. He's top three and in no particular order. It's Jarquez Hunter, Peyton Thorne, or Rivaldo Fairweather. I mean, sure. Rivaldo just being like, oh my gosh, they aren't going to just like hover me on the inside. It's got to be going to be huge. But all in all, you know, the as far as the practice report from today, I just couldn't quit watching the wide receivers, Brad. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I kind of know what to expect on the O-line, the D-line. The defensive backs are way back there. I can't really see them. And I just can't quit watching Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, KLS, and Robert Lewis and the crew just go out and get um, get uh, get footballs thrown by Peyton and Hank. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So You're just, you're just like a kid in the uh, in the arcade. Like, one more game. Let me do one more game. One well, more it's game. It's just one like, this looks so different. Like, this is what yeah. it's supposed to look like. And... I think we could say the same on the recruiting front. It's like, this is what it's supposed to look like. And the chatter's not dying down about some of these top prospects. That's coming up right here on Locked On Auburn. Brad Law, quick question. Can you imagine buying any part for your car, truck, or SUV not through ebaymotors.com? Most powerful nation in the world is the imagination. And imagine as I might. I can't. I just, I can't imagine it. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -mm. Why would you want to go somewhere where they're not going to have the part? It's like, I'm going to go into the store. And they're not going to have what I need. Why would yeah. you do that? I, I don't like middlemen. Don't like them. Don't need no. them with eBay Motors. No, if you're standing between two people, get away from me. Yeah. Get away from me. <laughs> eBay Motors, they stand on the end. They stand on the end because they, they will ship the part right to your door. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Brad Law, the recruiting hype around Auburn football right now is electric. It's, it's, it's absolutely at a level that we haven't seen before. But the caveat that I see from like the, the, the section of the Auburn fan base that's skeptical or they want to poke holes in it. Mm -hmm. The the most common response is, well, you're too young to remember what Coach Dye did. And I'm like, you're right. I wasn't alive when Coach Dye was a coach. Like that is sure. that is correct. But several things to that. One, different era, totally different things. We're we're comparing two different things here. They yeah. didn't even really rank recruiting the same way back then. But it's like, okay, that's fine. Two, let's say you're right. Let's say we haven't seen anything since then. Yeah which I think is the era where most people would say was the most successful era of yeah. Auburn football. Um, maybe early Tubbs year, if you really wanted to kind of, you know, split hairs, but still like yeah. you're talking about Auburn's most legendary coach. He's like, well, it, 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 it hasn't been like this till then. It's like, well, you're comparing <laughs> like, okay, like point proven, like uh, Auburn yeah. is heading in the right direction. Why are you doing this? Yeah. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't really, well, I understand opposing fan bases trying to knock Auburn's recruiting. It reeks of, yes. despera reeks of desperation. Like you smell it all the way down the hallway. Um, just quick but, thoughts on in-state recruiting. Brad, does it matter or no? Just quick thoughts. Of course quick it thoughts. matters. They wrote articles about the 2008 Alabama recruiting class because of how many in-state guys they but got. Brad, it's different now. Yeah. It doesn't okay. matter anymore. This year it's different. But good news, it matters again in 2027. It's not about anybody else. It's about Auburn. Nobody's saying that other places won't have good recruiting classes. Sure. Yeah. Fine. California's got great players. 
Texas has great players. Nobody's debating that. This ain't about you. This is about Auburn. Kindly leave the conversation, but keep watching. We appreciate that. Yeah, um, please keep watching. Yes. And comment and all of that kind of good stuff, too. We know you're there, and we appreciate it. Um, it does matter, and it matters for a lot of reasons. Perception is one of them, but more than that, they're just talented players in the state of Alabama. Yeah, that's right. Like, that's the most important thing. It's not like you're you're sweeping a, a, a state that has a dearth of talent. You got a mm -hmm. bunch of two-star, three-star guys running around. You have some of the top 150 players in the country in this state. Right. And Auburn's getting very close to pitching a shutout instead of being shut out. That yeah. matters. It does matter. Doesn't impact wins or losses in 24 necessarily. No. It absolutely will down the road. Yeah. And it might not even be in 2025, but in right. 2026 and 2027, it matters. Get the talented players around you to play for your program. You will win more games. Yeah. It's not an overnight thing. It takes time. But the way they're building this program, we say it over yeah. and over and over again. They're building it the right way. You want yeah. to build it through high school, not through the portal. This is how you do it. NIL has leveled the playing field. Now everybody can do just about the same, or can at least have this, a similar approach when it comes to wooing talent. Yeah. The difference is now you have a perfectly matched head coach with the culture of the fan base. Sure. You have a guy who... Uh, builds relationships is big on letting those relationship roots run very deep yep. with with a fan base whose culture is built on family anyway. Sure. And if you hear Hugh Freeze talk publicly or to his team, it's about all right, what kind of man are you after class? It's not just a football factory built to win games and then send you on to whatever. Mm. It's and so the fact that you have a coach who's perfectly paired with the culture of the fan base. Yeah, it's one of the biggest drivers of this, and the fact that NIL has leveled the playing field, and Auburn takes a backseat to nobody in that department. In other words, this is a train that isn't going to lose any steam because yeah. those things, as long as those things are in place, we can expect similar type of results on the recruiting trail. And after a while, the results on the recruiting trail lead to more wins on the field. That's right, Brad Law. How can people check out everything you've got going on? Uh, AU Brad Law on X and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have, gosh, uh, we have village vice that we do three, four times a week, Zach and I, during the season, be sure to check that out. Subscribe to that as yeah. well. We're just talking all the tigers you can handle. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, man, y'all have good chemistry. Y'all must be get along really well. <laughs> well, we do a show a bunch. Be sure to check out that uh, on YouTube. It's just uh, search war damn pods. Mm -hmm. Well, that'll, that'll come up there as well. Or on the audio platform, just search village vice. It'll come up there as well if you want more Auburn goodness. Please like the video. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time. This has been Locked on Auburn.